Immerse yourself in the bustling streets of New York City, where dreams are born and legends are made. Among these legends, one name stands out, Sherman Hemsley. Known for iconic roles and unforgettable performances, Sherman Hemsley left an indelible mark on entertainment. But behind the glitz and glamour lies a story filled with triumph, tragedy, and the lasting legacy of a true Hollywood icon. Despite his success, Hemsley faced challenges in his life, including heartbreaking legal battles and property disputes that lingered after his death. Join us as we dive into the incredible life of Sherman Hemsley, his humble beginnings, career highs, and the turbulent events that followed his passing. Sherman Hemsley, a beloved American actor, carved a place in television history with his memorable performances. At the time of his passing in 2012, he had an estimated net worth of $300,000. Quite modest by Hollywood standards, but his legacy was priceless. His career spanned decades and earned him the love and admiration of fans worldwide. Hemsley's most iconic role was undoubtedly as George Jefferson in the CBS sitcom All in the Family and its spin-off, The Jeffersons. As George Jefferson, Hemsley brought humor, warmth, and humanity to a character who became an emblem of 1970s and 1980s culture. Through George, he showed the world a successful, opinionated black businessman, breaking stereotypes and showcasing the complexities of the African-American experience in America. Hemsley's George Jefferson remains one of television's most unforgettable characters. This role was groundbreaking, changing the way black characters were portrayed on television and giving audiences a bold, nuanced view of African-American life. Following the success of the Jeffersons, Hemsley went on to show his versatility in the NBC sitcom Amen, where he played the eccentric and charismatic deacon Ernest Fry. This role further solidified his status as a comedic legend, capturing audiences with his wit and charm. But Hemsley's talents weren't limited to television. He also lent his distinctive voice to the character B.P. Richfield in the ABC puppet sitcom Dinosaurs, bringing depth and humor to the beloved show. And while he found success in film with movies like Ghost Fever, Mr. Nanny, and Screwed, it was his work on television that truly cemented his status as a cultural icon. Born Sherman Alexander Hemsley on February 1, 1938, he grew up in South Philadelphia. Raised by a hard-working single mother, Hemsley's childhood was marked by challenges, including the absence of his father, until he was 14. Despite these hardships, Hemsley pursued education with dedication, graduating from Barrett High School. Although he attended 9th grade at Central High School and 10th grade at Bach Technical High School, his formal education came to a halt after 10th grade when he decided to join the United States Air Force, serving honorably for four years. After his military service, Hemsley returned to Philadelphia, where he worked by day at the United States Postal Service and attended acting classes at the Academy of Dramatic Arts by night. He was determined to chase his dreams, eventually making the big move to New York City, where he balanced postal work with auditions and acting gigs. His hard work finally paid off when he landed the role of Gitlo in the Broadway musical Pearly in the early 1970s, marking the start of his journey to stardom. Before this big break, Hemsley had honed his craft with local theater groups in Philadelphia. Under the guidance of esteemed acting coach Lloyd Richards at the Negro Ensemble Company, he began to shine. Soon, Hemsley caught the attention of theater director Vinette Carroll, who invited him to join her urban arts company, where he performed in productions such as But Never Jam Today and The Lottery. It was on Broadway, however, where Hemsley truly captured the public's attention with his role in Pearly, which propelled him into the spotlight. His success on Broadway led to opportunities such as touring with Pearly for a year and starring in productions like Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope in 1971. Then came the life-changing moment 
a call from television producer Norman Lear. Lear envisioned Hemsley as George Jefferson, a new character for All in the Family, the groundbreaking sitcom that tackled race, politics, and social issues. Initially hesitant to leave the stage, Hemsley was persuaded when Lear promised to hold the role of George Jefferson for him. Imagine if Hemsley had never played George Jefferson. Would television history look the same? Two years later, Hemsley joined the cast of All in the Family, marking the beginning of his iconic portrayal of George Jefferson. Hemsley's chemistry with co-star Isabel Sanford, who played his wife Louise Wheezy Jefferson, was undeniable. Their dynamic made them fan favorites, eventually leading to the creation of the spin-off The Jeffersons in 1975. The show was an instant hit and ran for an impressive 11 seasons, ending in 1985. Under Lear's guidance, The Jeffersons became one of the most beloved sitcoms of its time, showcasing Hemsley's comedic genius and charm. After The Jeffersons, Hemsley continued his television career, returning briefly to Broadway in 1986 with the original cast. Later, Hemsley starred in Amen as Deacon Ernest Fry, further showcasing his range as an actor. His versatility didn't stop there. He explored music, releasing the single Ain't That a Kick in the Head in 1989 and his album Dance in 1992. This new venture landed him appearances on popular shows like Soul Train, adding another dimension to his already multifaceted career. Beyond television and music, Hemsley made guest appearances on shows like Sister, Sister, and starred in the comedy Good Behavior in 1996. He reprised his role as George Jefferson multiple times, reuniting with Isabel Sanford in guest appearances on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and in commercials for brands like The Gap, Old Navy, and Denny's. The real-life Jeffersons also went on tour, with Hemsley and Sanford performing the real-life Jeffersons to delighted audiences. Hemsley was a unique figure, vibrant and expressive on screen, yet intensely private off screen. Unlike the outspoken George Jefferson, Hemsley was quiet and reserved, even reclusive. Speculation surrounded his personal life, with some rumors suggesting he might be gay. However, Hemsley shrugged off these assumptions, emphasizing the importance of keeping his public persona separate from his private self. What did he hide behind that larger-than-life persona? In a conservative Hollywood era, maintaining privacy was often essential for many actors, including Hemsley. When Sherman Hemsley passed away on July 24, 2012, in his El Paso, Texas home, fans around the world mourned the loss of an iconic figure. He died of complications related to lung cancer. However, his burial was delayed for nearly four months due to a legal battle over his estate. Just weeks before his death, Hemsley had created a will leaving his $50,000 estate to his friend and business manager, Flora Enchenton. This led to a dispute when Richard Thornton, a man claiming to be Hemsley's half-brother, contested the will, arguing that Hemsley lacked the mental capacity to make such decisions. Could this be true, or was there more to the story? Enchenton, who had known Hemsley for years, insisted he had never mentioned having a brother. Thornton advocated for Hemsley to be buried in Philadelphia, their shared hometown, while Enchenton believed he should be laid to rest in El Paso, where he spent his final years. DNA tests were ordered to establish Thornton's relationship to Hemsley, while the core issue revolved around the validity of the will. After months of legal proceedings, a Texas judge ruled in Enchinton's favor, affirming Hemsley's will and granting her authority over his burial. On November 21, 2012, Hemsley was finally laid to rest with honors befitting his legacy. A military funeral was held and he was interred at Fort Bliss National Cemetery in El Paso. But this controversy left fans wondering, had the legal drama overshadowed Hemsley's legacy? In his later years, Hemsley resided in a modest yet comfortable home in El Paso, Texas. The house, 
valued at around $150,000, was a reflection of Hemsley's simple lifestyle. With three bedrooms and two bathrooms, it was designed for quiet living rather than extravagance. The house featured warm living areas, a cozy fireplace, and a beautifully landscaped backyard with fig and pomegranate trees. It was a serene retreat, ideal for a man who valued privacy and simplicity. Isn't it fascinating that a man who commanded the screen preferred such quiet, simple surroundings? Though Sherman Hemsley's life ended in a legal dispute, his enduring legacy as a beloved actor remains untouched. From his iconic role as George Jefferson to his private battles and his modest life in Texas, Hemsley's story is one of resilience, talent, and authenticity. What will you remember most about Sherman Hemsley? Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life and legacy of Sherman Hemsley. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more incredible stories from Black Hollywood icons. And let us know in the comments, which Black Hollywood legend would you like us to cover next?